Headaches and Heartaches on Midlands Today, brought to you by the beautiful Abbey Blooms Botanical Gardens and Cafe Community Initiative in Multifarnham, County Westmeath. A wonderful space for relaxation designed to promote positive mental health and well-being for all. Find Abbey Blooms Botanical Gardens on Facebook. Headaches and Heartaches. Rory Hafford is here from the Los Nagrena Family Resource Centre in Longford. He himself is based in Four in County Westmeath. And Lindsay is our first person with a dilemma. Good morning, by the way. Hey, Will. How are you? I'm in the mood for Christmas. Not everybody <laughs> is. We've got Christmas on the agenda already. On the brain. Yes, but anyway, more on that in about 10 minutes' time. Lindsay says she is finding it difficult to cope with the end of her relationship. She ended things with her long-term partner of 20 years after he cheated. They weren't married, but... His children were like her own and she had a very close relationship with his mother whom she cared for. She, or rather he, had told her uh, that she was the one throwing their relationship away. She is now living with her mum in the spare room and although she's no longer crying every single day she is crying at least once a week and she is heartbroken. And everybody is telling her to move on but easier said than done yeah yeah. so she was really invested in not just this guy yeah. but the people around him of course of course this is a tough one and this is particularly tough for me and I agonised over how how best to, to, to offer an opinion on it so I felt rather than go to the research papers and and the academics and all the rest of it, that, that I'd speak from the heart on this so that I could, in a sense, reach out and connect with this woman, OK? And I remember, I remember when the woman that I shared my life with walked in. Remember the day I can see it, I can touch it, I can feel it, I can, I can touch the fabric of the memory itself. And she lined me and the two kids up and she said, I'm in, lo- in love with another man. We had been together for 30 years and she never spoke to me after that. Wow. Yeah. So, so Sorry, see, I don't mean to, to pry. <laughs> of but course, yeah. Bolt out of the blue or did you suspect something was coming? I hadn't a clue. Hadn't a breeze. Now, I'm not here to condemn that woman. Uh, her reasons were her own. It's just the suddenness of mm. it, the, the the black and whiteness, the no way backness of it that 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 really hit me. Since then, I have been on my, as you know, on my own for over ten years, and uh, I wrote a book on it, as you also know, called A Savage Silence, based on the fact that there was no communication and no explanation, and that book flew off the shelves, and. At the time, I remember thinking, it's not the book, it's not me, it's the subject matter. So it spoke to the heart of people who were going through it in their droves. People listening to this this broadcast now will be involved in the same thing. And the book was a kind of a roadmap to negotiate your way out of this, this, this depth, this level of heartbreak. And people bought into that. And, and it's, it certainly helped them. So what I did is I moved into a forest outside Mullingar <laughs> and I worked to reconnect with the rejected self. Because remember, this is what is happening. The self is being rejected for something or somebody else. Now, that is very hard to take. And there is no pain, no pain like it that I've experienced. And every morning I woke up and I wanted to die. And then one day I woke up and I didn't want to die. Was there a trigger for the change? No, no. Uh, I think, I think the, the, the newness of the hurt, the sharpness, the dagger that, that pierces the brain can actually grow stale in the brain as well. And you become familiar mm. and accustomed to a new way of being in the world, a way that, that you, you, you assumed would never happen but did. So guess what, folks? It's real and you have to deal with it. And again, it's just part of the hand that life deals 
you. You can either accept the hand and play it or reject it. And as, as a psychotherapist, I, I have seen people who have rejected the hand. I've seen it. And it's happening more and more often now in, in, in the area, particularly in the area of sexuality, with young kids deciding, I want to be something other than, you know, I was born. And that's fine. I'm not here to criticize that. But it's not an easy decision for them. It's not easy. And I can see it. I can see that as, as a result of rejecting the hand that you are dealt. Uh, similarly with me, it wasn't easy. But one day I did get up and one day I was I wasn't fine. I was far from fine. But the cloud had lifted. So that's a long winded way of saying to Anne that the pain will last as long as it lasts. And you will get people saying to you, you should be over this now or you should move on or you should get on with your life. Don't listen to them. They don't know of what they speak. This pain is there for a reason. Can but, I interject with something? Course. Because a few people have suggested this on text. OK, he cheated and he shouldn't have cheated. Each right to throw away a 20 plus year relationship because of one mistake? It's a great question. I don't know the answer to that. Uh, uh, you see, we, we label things. We, so this man is now a cheat. But what did he do? He succumbed to human frailty that is hotwired into all of us. You know, he went this way instead of that way. Did he consider the ramifications of what could have happened? Probably not. Because, and we, we'll discuss this in, in another query that's come in later, you're not thinking with your logical brain at times like that. It is mostly mad emotion and you're just acting on it. And you don't see it. Uh, again, over the, the 25, 26 years that I've worked as a psychotherapist, I've seen both sides of this story. Mm. And I've seen men who have cheated and it's... In my experience, it's mostly men. That's not to say that it is. Uh, who, who are distraught. And they live with this distraughtness all their life because of what you described as one mistake. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Or, or the text. And, yeah, and, and I, you're right. There will always be mitigating factors and aggravating factors. Of and course. there's a lot we don't yeah. know. Yeah, of course. But yeah. she has made her decision nevertheless. She has. But here's the thing that, that jumped out at me. She is crying less. Mm. So in some way, it's becoming a little bit easier. And I would say to her, don't, don't be in a hurry. The pain is there to tell you something. You must lean into it. Learn from this pain because it's there for a reason. And then one day you will wake up and there won't be any more tears. You'll be all cried out. And that's the day that you look up. And if you want it, new love will be staring right back at you. Because what you put out is what you get back. But one crucial message to Anne, you are lovable. Never forget that. Derek is a little bit further on that journey. He bought an engagement ring for his ex but never actually gave it to her. And now he's about to propose to his current girlfriend. Should he use the same ring again? The answer after these. Disagree? Feel free. <laughs> Text or WhatsApp Midlands today yeah. on 083 30 10 103. Midlands 103. Rory Hafford, author and psychotherapist, is with us from 4 in County Westmeath. Oh boy, a lot of people have a view on this and I'm curious what yours will be. Derek, and I'm hoping that's not his real name, <laughs> giving the engagement ring intended for his ex to his current girlfriend. Should he do this? You asking me? OK, I've titled this The One Ring. The mm -hmm. One Ring, because it's like a scene from Lord of the Ring. The One Ring that binds them. Of course he can give her the ring. Of course, this new person, of course he can give her the ring. The ring is just a symbol. It's a thing, an object. The real gift is the love and commitment that you can't see, but you can feel it. Now, that said, because he is written in, I wonder, does he have an old attachment to the ring? Does it represent his feelings for the first girl? 
And in that case, he will have a constant reminder every time he holds this new woman's mm. hand. It'll be right there in front of him. So I, I'll tell you what, Derek, give me the one ring <laughs> and I'll, I, I'll, I'll throw it in the fires of Mount Doom, which which is just outside Castle Pollard. Oh, really? Yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> um, if he brings it to a pawn shop, he's not going to get the value for it. So depending on how much money he has, I think that governs part of the decision as well. Let's be practical. Yeah, yeah. And above all, don't share the backstory with the new girlfriend. For the love of God. Yeah. I hope no. he has Big, the common sense not to do that. Absolutely. I, I, can't, I can hardly wait for the text to come in on this. Oh, there are plenty. We'll get yeah, to the, them. The, the, this, this is a vexed subject. But I, I see it very clearly, very black and white to me. You know what I mean? The ring is simply a symbol, but the real gift is the love that you yourself feel and 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 pass on. So, of course, he can. By the way, if it's a symbol, why not just get ring out of a brack? <laughs> it's a bit more than a symbol. True, true. I know, no, it is. But but if you boil it down, OK, the, 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 this, this section is called uh, heartache. And headache. So it's about the heart more than more than anything else. And that that's how you express your love, not by giving people things or buying them stuff. You know, that's kind of vacuous. In Welcome to twenty twenty three. Speaking of which, Christmas, oh that great material consumerist time of year. Yeah. It's already rearing its head in Tom's house in the form of drama. He says every year there's an argument about whether to have family over for Christmas, whether to go to her parents which we have done for the last five years in a row. He wants to remain at home and allow the children enjoy their day and have his parents and siblings over. The wife, however, complains that it's too much of a hassle, despite him offering to cook. So it sounds like it's okay when they're going to her parents. Yeah. It's not okay when his parents come to them. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Tom. You could always come to my house for Christmas. Yeah, cook, cook there, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll be spending yet another Yuletide on my own with the cold and the wind and the rain rattling oh, the window. Hang on. Yes. Hang on. What's that? What's that? Oh, it's the world's smallest <laughs> violin. <laughs> yes, I only have one window. Or you could embrace what you do have. And I find that this is, this is the stuff that, that deflects people in, in, in their thinking. They look for the very thing that they don't have and don't see the very thing that they do. So for me, accentuate the positive of the day. OK, what does he have? Uh, he's going to have his dinner served up to him. He's going to get his Christmas prezi. He's going to watch the Grinch. He's going to fall asleep on the floor. And before you know it, he'll be back in his own bed with a full belly. Or he can go to war with his wife. You choose. I stop. I'm telling you. Well, I'm, I'm looking at you and I'm waiting for you to counter that. What have I said? What you have said is, the is, is eminently practical, mm. reasonable, mature, mm -hmm. sensible. The list goes on. Yes. However, However, there's a point of principle involved. He does not feel there is equitable treatment here. OK, OK. Well, you know what? Argue that with the woman and see, see, see how far you get. You're a lot of help, you are. <laughs> Lisa says her brother, who is in his 50s, has started dating a 28-year-old. I love this one. Whom he is spending all of his money on, and it is embarrassing, she says, to see him fall head over heels for her. His children do not like her. He is choosing her over them. How can she make him see that he's being a fool? <laughs> of course he's spending all his money on her. She's 28, for God's sakes. And the thing is, is he choosing the children over her? I think he's just choosing her. Do you know what I mean? So it's the way, it's the way you see things as they unfold. And I would say that he most certainly does not feel like a fool. If anything, he probably feels like a million dollars at the moment. 
I'm looking at you. I'm waiting for you to jump in, but you haven't. You've missed your moment. No, no. So, I I hear you, and I know I'm the lads in the pub up. are going to say all of this. Yeah. But twenty eight year old is going to be perhaps thirty five year old in a couple of years, yeah. and by then might think, do I really want to be hanging around with a dude yeah. who's well in his fifties, yeah, who gonna... probably doesn't want to give me children, <laughs> and he'll have blown his opportunity to have a decent relationship with a family he already has. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't know any of that. You don't know any of that. You're, you're presuming. You're supposing. And the other thing is that, that the, a lot of people with, with stuff like this, they move to the stereotypical uh, uh, opinion on it. You know, he is, she is, therefore this is. Real life doesn't follow straight lines. Not at all. Real life is like is like uh, a little plastic bag being caught in an impossible updraft. It can go anywhere and land in any place. So what this man is doing is he is seeing an opportunity and he is seizing an opportunity. What one amongst us could say that we wouldn't do this? Now, what during a midlife crisis? Uh, what's a midlife crisis? Define that. Do, does it seem to me that this man is having a crisis? He seems to me that he's having the time of his life. He's going off with a 28-year-old. You don't know that. You don't know that. I do. You don't know that he's going off. I mean, again, that's a negative term. Anyway, can, can I prove my point, please? Jeez, before we run out of time. So Lisa is trying to be rational hmm. about this. But rationality left the building the second he was smitten. Yes, folks, for those of you who are listening at home, that's an old-fashioned word for lost his marbles. Yes, the second his penis was smitten. (laughs) You've used the P word. Yes. You've used the P word. We've all been stupid in love. All of us, I would argue. Or lust. Uh, or, Or love. And it will wear off. And the newness of this, similar to the first... Uh, question that we dealt with will grow stale in the brain as well and one morning sanity as you've been pushing for will will seep back into the, the sulci of his brain but if you push him he will go the other way I've seen it happen I've seen it happen many times but he has to figure this out for himself simply by you me or Lisa saying to him you must do this could quite possibly drive him in the other direction. So let him discover the delights of this relationship. And then one day he too will wake up and go, oh, yeah, maybe. But you can't force him to do that. This is his life. This is his adventure. And we are all imbued with the power of choice. On that note, Rory. Thank you very much. Thank you, Will. By the way, he's got a new book coming very soon. Who who has? You. Oh, okay. Are we allowed to say anything or is it a case of, you know, it (laughs) self-destructs? It's called One Night and it shall be launched very, very soon. Do you want to say anything more? No, No, I don't. No, no, no. 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 All all, all secretive. Yeah. Thanks for the mention. Uh, For the record, uh, there are a lot of people saying fair play to the uh, gentleman with the 28-year-old lady on his arm. I knew it. And uh, a few accusing the sister of being a hypocrite. If she had a toy boy, she'd probably be very happy. And one other caller says, the exact same happened to me after 10 years. My guy moved a Russian lady in behind my back. It doesn't actually say lady. (laughs) Apparently flew her over from Russia. There you go. That's where we leave it. Thank you very much to Cameron Clark for putting it all together. Rory, we'll chat soon. Bye bye. Thank you. Headaches and Heartaches on Midlands Today Brought to you by the beautiful Abbey Blooms Botanical Gardens and Cafe Community Initiative In multi County Westmeath A wonderful space for relaxation Designed to promote positive mental health and well-being for all Find Abbey Blooms Botanical Gardens on Facebook